Hey, it's Tim. Thank you for tuning in again today. What a weekend. I mean, we had Record Store Day, of course, on Saturday. And then here locally, we have the Denver Record Show, which is actually held in a little suburb 15 minutes north of downtown. Uh, they do two shows a year, and this one just happened to fall on the Sunday after Record Store Day. In talking to some of the vendors, you know, a little bit midday, some of these guys were saying, oh, not the best show that they've seen. You know, maybe a lot of people blew their budget on Record Store Day. Um, I was lucky enough to make my way down there, and um, the second part of this video will feature all of the pickups that I picked up, and it was a banner day for me at the Denver Record Show. And then I'm going to start the video off um, with kind of a love letter to Fort Collins and the kind of growing vinyl record collector scene here. Um, more about that in just a moment. In the last year, we've had two new record shops uh, open up in Fort Collins. Literally, both of these shops are less than a year old. They both decided to participate in, uh, in Record Store Day this spring, which is fantastic. And I managed to go to um, Driver 8 Records, which is in Old Town Fort Collins. And then I went up to the other new shop, which is Songbird Records. Both great shops. They both have kind of a separate niche. I'd say Songbird is more of a classic rock. Um, although lately really into reggae, he's got an incredible uh, reggae collection. Uh, and then uh, a few new records as well. Meanwhile, Driver 8 is focused on, I'm going to say, folk and Americana, maybe some electric blues, uh, indie alternative, uh, hard to find titles, uh, brand new titles. And he has a growing uh, used collection uh, as well. So both fantastic shops. And I was really happy. I they were both really pleased with, uh, you know, what happened and what transpired during the day. Both of them arrived to their own shops early in the morning. We're talking about like 6 a.m. And both of their shops, um, they told me, had already, there was already a lines, uh, a pretty substantial lines at both of the shops. Now, a lot of those folks were the Swifties, the Taylor Swift crowd, but even so, uh, without the Taylor Swift release, they both moved a lot of the titles that they had invested in, which is great news, and I'm sure both of them got new people into the shop that had never even been there before. Um, so all good for the Fort Collins record collector scene as far as I'm concerned. Now, of course, as luck would have it, I woke up on Saturday morning, Record Store Day morning, and we had about a, an inch and a half of fresh snow on the ground. Friday, Friday evening, things began to cloud up. It got kind of that gray, that gunmetal gray skies, and there was a forecast of snow overnight. Even on <laughs> April 20th, April 21st, crazy. Um, that's Colorado for you. That's the front range of Colorado. There's probably going to be one more blizzard in the first week of May. It never fails. Uh, but here today, the snow is gone. We've got bright sunshine. We're back to normal at 65 degrees and a great spring morning. I had a very, very short list for Record Store Day. Despite all of the fantastic titles, I'm trying to weigh myself in a little bit. I'm still on the fence on one title that I was not able to find on Saturday, and I actually did see it the next day at the record show, and I decided to hold off. More about that later, but the first title I picked up was, of course, Chet, uh, you know, mastered by Kevin Gray, Kraft. This is, by all reports so far, an incredible pressing, a great sounding record. Yeah, the stereo has been out for a while. This is the mono, of course, and, um, you know, was happy to pick this up. Haven't had time to listen to it yet, but it's definitely on the, on the pile. 
And by the way, I'm recording upstairs today up in the living room. My, my listening room is a real mess right now. I have got records everywhere on the floor. Uh, you know, I've got to, I've got to do some sleeving. Um, so decided to, to film up here today. Now, the next thing on my list was the 20th anniversary of the final Warren Zevon album, The Wind. Uh, this was recorded with a lot of his friends. Uh, the news was out that he was dying of, uh, of cancer and or mesolothemia and um it kind of had um uh, a special you know emphasis on the recording of this record they took extra care more videos more documentation was done um what that uh album is the wind and again haven't even popped it open yet but looking forward to listening to this record the 20th anniversary edition record store day exclusive so i think that means that this is not coming out later at least in this variant or uh and it i believe this is black uh, black vinyl third on my list was the triple album the new bill evans um, archival release um these were these were radio recordings um from the late 60s from denmark and in different configurations, uh, one one of these uh, records is with an orchestra. One is with a quartet, I believe. Um, there it is. Now, everything I hear about this, people are raving about it and saying it is a fantastic sounding recording. Um, I did pick up a, a, a Bill Levin's title on Records Third Day two or three years ago. And I failed to open it. I just kept on hearing uh, there were some bad reviews on the, on the sound quality of that release. This is supposed to be amazing. I've seen several preview uh, reviews from everybody from Norman Masloff to Ken McAuliffe. And they all raved about it. So it was on my list. I'm happy I got it. I picked up all three of those at Driver 8 Records, and then I made my way over to Songbird Records, which is, which is uh, just across from the campus from Colorado State University. Uh, the owner, Jason, has got a fantastic shop. He's got a really welcoming vibe, uh, kind of a living room set up in there, and he actually had a food truck on site for the occasion. Um, so I was able to pick up a breakfast burrito at about 8.30 in the morning, which definitely hit the spot. And um, I did not find anything else. I was basically tapped out as far as what I wanted. But I did take a look through um, Jason's used bins or new arrivals and found what appears to be kind of a beat up copy of uh, John Martin's Solid Air. This is a classic British folk album from 1971. Um, you know, we got Danny Thompson on double bass. Dave Maddox, great uh, Fairport Convention drummer, is is uh, behind the kit on this album. Tristan Fry on vibes. Tenor sax, Tony Coe. Um, this was uh, recorded. That's actually just track one. There's um, John Rabbit Bundrick. Uh, went on and did a ton of stuff with The Who, both in studio and live in the late 70s. And um, I think he was along for the uh, It's Hard, the supposedly the, the final Who tour from 1982. Anyway, Rabbit John Bundrick is all over this album, uh, playing electric piano. Uh, we also have Dave Pegg on bass, a uh, great player and someone by the name of Richard Thompson is on guitar and mandolin. If you don't know this album, run out and find one. Um, I have the first US pressing with the pink island rim, the island label, uh, partially recorded at Sound Design Studios in London. That is a magical studio. Uh, Nick Drake recorded there. If you check my playlist, I have um, several videos about the history of recording studios and sound design is one of those videos. Check it out. Solid Air famously is a song written for and about Nick Drake. Um, this is an ethereal 
album, it's almost kind of a, an, a, a religious experience listening to this record. It is that good. It is, it is sparse, but, uh, and John Martin's voice is incredible. His vocals are incredible. Great guitar player, great instrumentation, great separation of instruments. This thing is in mint condition despite that cover. And um, really, it's been on my hit list to look for and uh, pleasantly surprised that I picked it up at Songbird Records in Fort Collins. Okay, Sunday morning, the day after Record Store Day, I was up and on the road at about 9.15 in the morning. I had about a 40 minute drive south down to uh, North Glen, uh, Colorado, where this Denver Record show, show was being held. And I, you know, I shared uh, kind of a, um, a hit list of items. Lately for record shows, I've really been putting some thought into um, kind of shopping intentionally, not just getting kind of, you know, there in the moment and just being overwhelmed and maybe making poor decisions on purchases. So I had a pretty focused list. I'm, I'm happy to say that I, I stuck to it pretty well. Um, I didn't find everything I was looking for, but I did find several of the things I can cross off the list. Um, let's start with uh, an album that so far I haven't been able to find. I haven't been happy with the condition of these records that I've, I've seen here and there occasionally. It's still a pretty common album, pretty easy to find, probably all over America. I'm talking about Talking Book. Stevie Wonder, the incredible record that kind of changed music in 1971 with that funk groove from Superstition um, and on and on and on on that record. It is a fantastic record and I wanted the original pressing. Um, I had read reviews about the Hollywood pressing so I was looking for that and I wanted to have just for the hell of it, I wanted to have one of the original gatefold covers with the Braille on it. If you don't know, uh, let, let's take a look at it. There it is, that gorgeous kind of chocolate brown cover with Stevie on the cover. And let's take a look and see if we can get this Braille on here. Oh yeah, right, right there you can see there's Braille here. Um, there is a Braille description here. And we have even more... Um, kind of an extensive passage of Braille on the inside cover here. There it is. You can see that right there. So really cool. Um, you'll see that this pressing is gr in great condition. Uh, the sleeve, there's kind of none of that feathering and, you know, disintegration over time. Really, really fine condition. And, of course, this was on the Tamla label um, definitely worth kind of holding out for really happy that I found this this was the last find of the day I found a new vendor that I hadn't uh, seen at the show before really nice guy and he lives south of Denver uh, I think this, I think his name was Zachary very very well curated booth Everything had been ultrasonically cleaned. Uh, everything was in uh, protective sleeves. He actually had notes on every uh, record as far as what the pressing was, what the condition was. Um, basically a dream vendor. And I paid $25 for this. The record's in near mint condition. The cover is in VG++. Um, for something that is increasingly getting a little bit hard to find that record in great condition. That Superstition song and all of the other hits on here, Side 2 leads off with You Are the Sunshine of My Life. Uh, sorry, that's Side 1, the flip side of Side 2. Uh, I mean, what an amazing single. So these records really received a lot of play back in the day, and you will, um, you'll be hard-pressed to find a clean pressing. See what I did there. Every time.
The second record that I picked up at that same booth was a copy of Oh No, It's Devo. I love the song Peekaboo, and this was one of the early covers. You can see maybe there's perforation here, and you can actually stand up this record and have it kind of sit up on itself if you want. Uh, you can see the back cover there with uh, where you can do that. Um, thankfully this thing is intact. It's never been kind of uh, uh, folded out from what it was. It included um, the Devo Club, you know, details and the mail order stuff for merch and t-shirts, which is nice to see uh, in there. And, you know, a fantastic collection of songs here if, uh, if you're a Devo lover. Uh, produced by the great Roy Thomas Baker, did all that work with Queen, uh, also the Cars. This is a great sounding record. I think uh, I think this was cut at Sterling Sound. Um, oh no, it's Devo. Another near mint record pickup. Another kind of a rare find that I I found at the. Uh, Wax Tracks booth. Wax Tracks, great record shop in uh, Capitol Hill in Denver. And I picked up a copy of Basic. This was the Fred Marr and Robert Quine um, production from 1984. Now, Robert Marr um, went on to produce several albums. Um, I think he produced a Feelys album, and if I'm not mistaken, I think he either did a Galaxy 500 or maybe Luna's first record. I'm drawing a blank right now. Robert Quine, legendary guitarist, he, you know, famously put together the Matrix tapes. Um, he was enraptured with the Velvet Underground as a failing law student. He moved out to San Francisco and uh, recorded a series of shows in 69, I believe, that the Velvet Underground put on at a club called The Matrix, um, kind of a cow hollow uh, marina district club that's no longer there. Uh, there's something there in place of it. Anyway, I, I did a Velvet Underground, kind of the long shadow of the Velvet Underground, all the people that were inspired and influenced. Uh, that's another video mine you can go look for if you're interested in digging further. This was a sealed record for 12 bucks. Really interesting music here. Fred Maurer also um, played with Robert Quine in Lou Reed's band for a couple albums in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, Robert Quine, of course, went on and did a ton of work with Matthew Sweet along with uh, Richard Lloyd. One of the items on my hit list for the show was The Queen Is Dead, uh, Smith's record, great record. And, you know, when it comes to The Smiths and The Cure, I'm now trying to find UK or European pressings, especially if those European, European pressings happen to maybe share or use the UK mastering plates. Uh, because you're getting basically the same pressing uh, as a, an original UK, sometimes for a lot less more, a lot less money or investment. And um, I didn't find The Queen Is Dead, but I did find Hatful of Hollow. This was the interesting, you know, 1987 album that's kind of a partial comp. Um, it includes um, some radio uh, recordings, uh, the John Peel show actually, and a ton of great music from the Smiths, including How Soon Is Now. That was all over the radio in, in uh, 1987, 1988. Um, kind of the Smiths, I think it was their final single. Smith fans, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but this is a really nice um, second pressing of the UK original. And of course that was on Rough Trade. So, great pickup, The Smiths, a classic band. Say what you will about Morrissey. Just travel back in time and put those records on.
So I did manage to pick up three items that were not on my list, but they were things that I know I would enjoy from two of my favorite brands ever. That would be XTC and Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptians. Um, what I did is I picked up 12 inch singles. These things were priced so cheaply, I could not let them go. They're all UK pressings. Uh, first is a 12 inch of King for a Day. XTC. This was off uh, the 89 album Oranges and Lemons. I think it was 89. Uh, King for a Day, of course, is a, um, a Colin Molding song, and we get a 12-inch kind of tripped-out radio version on side A, and then the regular 7-inch single is on side B, along with an unreleased um, song, an Andy song, Happy Families. Um, I've only listened to the, the side A, the, the longer version, but incredible pressing, just fantastic dynamics. Uh, this is a, you know, whenever you can find these 12 inch singles, and especially if they're on 45 RPM, um, they will just blow your head off as far as the incredible um, sound that you're getting from these things. So I seek out 12 inch maxi singles whenever I see them. Does that make sense? Another single off of Oranges and Lemons was The Loving XTC. Uh, you'll see that I paid all of $8 for this. Um, it includes a B side, which is uh, Cynical Days, another Colin Molding song. And then another Colin song, The World is Full of Angry Young Men. Uh, the Loving, of course, on side one was an Andy song off of that great record, Oranges and Lemons. Last but not least, Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptians. This is from the Globe of Frogs album. Uh, Balloon Man, the kind of hit from the record. Um, Robin almost has to play this song every concert that he does um, along with I Want to Destroy You from the, you know, the famous Soft Boys tune. Um, but this was from 1988. Uh, it includes uh, The Ghost Ship, another Robin song, vocals and acoustic guitar, uh, Hitchcock, and A Globe of Frogs, which is um, featuring Peter Buck. Of course, Peter Buck was on the Globe of Frogs album. But there's a 12 inch of uh, Balloon Man. Another kind of post-punk new wave uh, record that has eluded me so far is the great Matt Johnson, The The album, Soul Mining from 84. And found a great copy for $20. Um, again, vinyl is basically near mint. Um, great record. This is the day, uh, Uncertain Smile, the title song is fantastic. Um, Perfect is a great song as well. That is The The from 1984, Soul Mining. Another record I've been looking for and I've been picky about condition. That is 1979's Bowie album, Lodger. This was, uh, you know, supposed to be kind of the third in the Berlin trilogy, although this was recorded uh, mainly, I think, in Montreux. Uh, interesting artwork. Uh, this has got I Am The DJ on it. Haven't heard this album in years. Looking forward to giving it a listen. RCA, Black Label, 79. Uh, some disturbing artwork on the uh, gatefold there. And, um, but yeah, another one to add to the collection. I'm really kind of closing in on originals for uh, all of the Bowie albums, um, whether that's US or UK, um, but one of my favorite artists as well. So happy to add Lodger to the collection. Okay, last but certainly not least, in that Instagram post I had mentioned I was looking for early Cure albums. Um, specifically, I don't have a copy of 17 Seconds and I don't have a copy of Faith. Both of these are kind of bookend, almost, you know, 
they almost fit together. Um, this was really the goth period for The Cure. A lot of people will tell you that their favorite Cure record is 17 Seconds with a masterpiece song from that record, A Forest. Um, it's a very, very spare sounding record. Both of these are, although the instrumentation picked up a little bit on Faith. Uh, but 17 Seconds, just an amazing record. There it is, 1980. You can see that it's got that kind of varnished, um, shiny cover, uh, which is kind of indicating that it might be a UK cover. But upon further inspection, what I found out is I have a first German pressing. Now, the cool thing about this record is I looked at the dead wax and there is strawberry etched into the dead wax, which was the mastering studio in the UK that the original UK pressings were pressed at. So something tells me that they took the same plates um, over to Berlin or wherever it was. Uh, it might have been Hanover because there is a, uh, there's a, a stamp on the back cover uh, maybe the back covers uh, jackets were made in Hanover, but uh, I don't think you're going to see that at right now. I might include a photo of it. Um, but what an amazing record. Again, 1980, Fiction Records, German Pressing. Side one, a reflection, play for today, Secrets in Your House, and three. Side two, leading off of that eerie instrumental piece, the final sound segueing into an amazing song of Forest, uh, followed up by M and then At Night, and then the title track, 17 Seconds. Super pleased to find this, and um, the record's in near mint condition. It is dead silent. There is that kind of customized fiction label and just an amazing record. Have I, have I already mentioned that this record is amazing? Trust me, uh, the sound is just otherworldly. The music is fantastic. Um, incredible kind of stereo stage separation. Sound stage is amazing. Um, really, really pleased. Finally, 1981, the follow-up album from The Cure, and that would be Faith. Love that Cure logo. Love these kind of gray, just kind of otherworldly covers from both 17 Seconds and this one. Again, um, incredible music. This record is not in the same near mint condition. I hear a little noise. Um, very, very slight. Um, but this being a quiet record in several places, um, I'm going to have to put this through my humming guru a couple times and see if I can get a little improvement. But even so, it's in VG++ condition. Um, a 1981 rare record. And this is not a UK. This is actually a Netherlands pressing. Uh, the back sleeve has got printed in Holland. Um... But I'll tell you what, if you go on Discogs and look at original UK pressings, they're going up. And um, those that are available are not following the median prices, which are actually surprisingly not crazy. But you'll probably see that um, prices are going up. So maybe look to the Benelux countries and the surrounding countries, especially if you can kind of decipher that they're using the same... Uh, mastering that was done in the UK. That's my tip for today, and it's, I'm sure you've heard it before as well. That is 1981's Faith. It was a banner weekend, kind of a, a warm feeling after Record Store Day. You know, the fact that we've got two new record shops here in town locally that are both doing well. They both decided to make an investment and participate in Record Store Day. As far as I can tell, I think they were rewarded. And, um, you know, judging by their social media posts, they're both very happy uh, with the day. And um, follow that up with another 
fantastic record show. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. I'll be back soon with a new video. Take care and have a great week.